Hey guys, so in today's video I'm just sharing another snippet of what a day in the life of a radiologist is. Also I'm going to be sharing some cons of doing radiology and being a radiologist. So today started off like any other day, came in, cleaned my workstation thoroughly and then got settled in for work. <music> I started the day by having a look at my previous biopsies from the week before. I also caught up on some admin and checked up on some reports that I had done the last week. I then complained about how much we had on our upper GI list and the endless stream of MRCP requests that seemed to be on there. It's been a struggle to get on top of our list lately. There's so many requests on there, so many scans, some of which are frankly unnecessary. Afterwards, I then did some reporting for about an hour and a half and then left to get ready for my next session, which was an ultrasound session that afternoon. As usual, I went to grab a coffee, but I was avoiding caffeine this week, so I decided to try a matcha latte instead. And it was quite nice. My first time trying it and I really liked it. I've come to my ultrasound list and realised that I'm actually early because the first patient has cancelled so the next patient we actually have at 11 15. so we can have a little bit of a chat whilst i wait and sip on my matcha latte okay i thought we could talk about the cons of radiology the first one i kind of mentioned earlier today which is the fact that the workload is just getting crazy no one wants to make decisions anymore without having scans and increasingly we're just getting more and more scans of exclusion so oh no just to be safe let's just rule out this even though clinically that might not even be the issue it's just like it just it's always more reassuring for the doctor than it is for the patient we're getting loads and loads of scans like this morning our upper gi list was 159 patients and most of them were just filler what i call filler scans the yield is so low and this increased workload would be a pro because you, you just say, oh, hire more people, then that means, you know, you're in demand, hire more radiologists. Well, there are no more radiologists. That's been the biggest issue, at least here in the UK, is that we don't have enough actual radiologists to fill the slot and to meet the demand. So what just happens is it just piles on to the existing trainees and consultants, and that's not helping anyone. Obviously, COVID hasn't helped. But to be fair, this is not even a COVID thing because my hospital has recovered from COVID in terms of catching up with backlog of, of reports. So this isn't new. This is not. I can't even blame COVID for this one because it's like two years down the line, a whole new thing. But the workload is getting worse and worse. The second thing is the job can get a bit monotonous. So depending on how your career, like how varied your work is as a radiologist. You can end up doing the same thing over and over again. Now, this is the same for any job. At some point, once you become good at your job, it starts to become samey, samey. I mean, a pilot can only you know, fly so many Boeings before he's like, oh God, yet another Boeing 737 to, you know, like it gets it, it gets samey, samey. And we're doing just no different, but it can happen a lot quicker because, for example, neuro. That's one specialty that I think I don't know how neuroradiologists cope because for in most hospitals neuroradiologists just do neuro and when I mean they just do neuro they don't even do like a little bit of neck if we've gone below the neck cut do you get me so it's like they only do brain and that would just kill me but some people's personality suits that I suppose so it can if you're mostly diagnostic it can become a bit monotonous i'm going to interrupt it earlier because the rda came to tell me that the patient was around but anyway so i was saying about how the job can be monotonous but that is very dependent on the kind of job you have me for example i do a gi and i do dining reporting so already in a day i can decide that i want to report up a gi lower gi or gynae that's where really three different pathologies or types of pathologies and then I also do intervention and I do like I can do ultrasound and stuff so my day kind of varies 
And part of the reason why I decided to train in that way and have those skills was so I could have a varied day and prevent or at least minimise the chances of getting too repetitive with stuff. Third con would be the ease of litigation. Now, with most other specialties, if you didn't document, it didn't happen, right? Which is great that if you didn't, like, because then it makes you document everything you've done. But the flip side to that is whatever you don't document is lost forever. And that can be to the benefit of the clinician. So if you didn't hear a murmur when you were examining the patient and so you didn't document a murmur, everyone was like, oh well, I guess there wasn't a murmur. And if years down the line, the patient ends up having had a heart condition, maybe they had you know, endocarditis or something, but, or maybe not, but like a heart condition, it could just be like, oh, it wasn't there when you examined them, that's fine, because you haven't documented it, so it mustn't have been there. Everyone gives you the benefit of the doubt that if you haven't written, they have a murmur, it mustn't have been present. Whereas for radiology, because our images are always there for someone else to go and look at, years down the line, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line, there's always a chance that someone's going to be like, oh yeah, but mm, that, that cancer was there 20 years ago. Even though it was like a dot that nobody would ever have called a cancer anyway, it's there. And it just means that whenever they're looking for escape boats, where it's very easy to scapegoat radiology because our mistakes are always available for everyone to see with the benefit of hindsight and obviously hindsight is 2020 so everyone always be right. The fifth thing is exams. Previously exams were a big deal because we had six and each module was a paper so you had to six, um, sit all six modules in part two and part one had anatomy and physics then you sat six modules in part two and then you had to do all part 2b which was like a viva and some longer cases thankfully right before my time they merged those six exams into one exam which just meant you had to study quite a lot because you were now studying the whole six modules but honestly i prefer that format so you just write the one exam so you do your part one which is your um, anatomy and physics. Your part 2a is one exam of all the six modules and then your part 2b is your viva and your long cases. Still quite a few exams, not gonna lie, so it is still kind of a con, particularly when you think about the physics part which was my, <laughs> the bane of my life because I did not expect, you know, physics. I haven't written any others so I can't say in comparison to doing an MRCP all those stages or completing MRCS or anaesthetics or pathology or whatever, I don't know. I'm guessing from people who have probably come to radiology from other specialties, they are the ones who will know because they've probably done professional exams and other specialties and then in comparison I've heard that radiology exams are harder. So this afternoon when I'm prepping for a teaching session, one of my consultants has asked me to join him in delivering a teaching um, session to some master's students. I think they're, master, they're doing an MSc in imaging or clinical imaging, medical imaging, I don't know, I don't, I don't actually know what the master's is for, but as part of that there's um, a module on translational imaging and so I'm giving a talk on MRI in the liver and just giving examples of the cases that we see, so I'm going to have to troll through our cases um, and find some relevant cases and do a whole presentation and powerpoint so that's my job this afternoon to sort that out because i need to get that to him by wednesday after lunch i spent the afternoon preparing for the teaching session and going through packs trying to get images of the various pathologies that i was showing it was actually a lot harder than i thought it was going to be particularly to find simple things like a liver cyst which i see almost every day randomly on scans but because it's so common i hadn't bothered to save any cases of them that's the other day thank you guys for staying with me today i hope you enjoyed this video and as per usual if you do and you want to see more videos then consider subscribing to my channel thanks guys